Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a teardown of one of these really cheap uh, Wi-Fi adapters. Now, uh, I bought these quite a while ago off of Amazon and the things do not work. <laughs> um, they just sit there, they act like they're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, uh, and then they never do. They have a WPS push button on them too. That also doesn't work to connect to anything. And these were about $9 or something like that, and I figured, well, if this little tiny thing works for $9, this is a little Eddie Max one or whatever it is. I think this is like $9.09 or something like that, real cheap uh, Wi-Fi adapter, but of course this doesn't have any kind of antenna on it, so range can't possibly be all that great. So, I actually got these two before I bought this little one. I just knew the reviews on this was good, and I've seen other people use these before. The reviews on these were kind of mixed, but uh, they had uh, several different versions of them, and there weren't really any reviews for those long antenna versions, So, and the ones I did see were okay. So I figured, well, they're about the same price as any other Wi-Fi adapter. I actually think I paid like $10.99 for these or something like that. So I had plans for these, some kind of plan. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to take one of these things apart. And we'll just see what is inside of it because the thing does not work whatsoever. And I think the reason why they don't work is probably my fault for not completely reading it. Uh, you know, the title says it supports wireless in, right? But if you actually read into it, it only supports uh, wireless in, and it was like a pre-release version or something like that. There's two different versions of wireless in. I'll probably have to annotate it on the screen. But I couldn't get it to work at all with my wireless uh, setup, so presumably mine wasn't right. I even went and tried uh, changing some settings inside the router in order to get it to work. And I kind of wanted these uh, modules instead of these things because this is only 150 megabits per second at its max. This is 300. And my wireless end setup is actually capable of doing the 300 uh, because I live out in the middle of nowhere. There's no interference out here. So I can set the... Uh, the... Uh, bandwidth to uh, 40 megahertz instead of the standard 20 that you would usually use. So it appears that this uh, outside metal piece is just kind of crimped on here, if you will. get the screwdriver in there at the right angle to pry those up. Alright, there we go. I think you got it. Pull that off, and then this, I think, will just kind of come apart. Like so. Alright, so let's see if I can get a closer look at this. Alright, so taking a look at this, uh, oddly enough, there's another one of these little uh, sort of squiggly antennas in here. Which is weird because you're supposed to be using the external antenna, I thought, with this, but I don't know, maybe not. Maybe that antenna is just there uh, as a showpiece. You see there's a little tack switch in here for the uh, WPS function there. If I flip this over, there should be something on the other side. And yeah, some kind of real tech chip, which is exactly what it was supposed to be. Should be able to read that number. I can't really see it. And you just have this, uh, what is this, an SMA connector or something like that, just kind of soldered onto here. They only bothered to solder the uh, ground pad to one of these, I noticed, which, I mean, theoretically should be okay, but I don't really understand or fully understand why these things don't work. There's not a whole lot in here. A lot of little capacitors and stuff like that, but. Not sure what that little chip is. 
little five pin thing like a regulator or something 3.3 volt regulator I don't know kind of hard to read it anyway there's not a whole lot inside of these things and I'm sure the antennas if you took one of the antennas apart it would be even less exciting because uh, most likely there's only a little piece of wire that goes up like this far on most of these things so uh, probably not really that much of a point to buying the long antenna version but let me uh, try to uh, replicate what these things did. Uh, so I've tried a few different operating systems as well. I tried Windows Vista, I tried Windows 10 technical preview at the time, I tried Windows 8, I tried Windows 7, I tried uh, Ubuntu is actually I think my main point of having these things. It's for a Linux machine. I tried Android. Maybe I should also mention the packaging that these things came in because it was just the uh, little cardboard thing and the DVD, little mini DVD, uh, was just kind of stuck into, kind of stuck in there like that. And these were inside the envelope and there was, like it wasn't sealed inside of this or anything. Uh, but you'll see what it says, uh, USB 2.0 wireless 802.11n, Wi-Fi 300 megabits per second 802.11n down there, Wi-Fi certified, made by U-Link, which said for some reason sounds like a knockoff of D-Link. Anyway, wireless standards, and you'll notice it says IEEE 802.11n draft, and I think that's where the issue actually comes from. But then again, I couldn't get these things to do anything because I couldn't get them to do like uh, whatever you call it, ad hoc mode where these things broadcast a Wi-Fi signal. And just for the fun of it, I went and plugged this thing into my computer and surprisingly enough, it actually does uh, recognize that and it installed a driver for it, but it doesn't do anything with the driver that it found, like the default Windows one. So it's kind of weird and the one, the thing that I thought was funny is this one is the adapter that we just tore down this uh, RTL 8192EU that's the one that we just took apart and the wireless adapter that I actually use on this computer is an RTL 8192CU and that is this thing right here apparently well obviously the, what it's showing is the chipset that's on the inside of this but this is the Wi-Fi adapter that I use on this computer and it was plug and play. I just plugged it in, chose the Wi-Fi network, and you know I didn't have to manually install any drivers or anything like that. And I was looking at the Amazon reviews for this thing. It's uh, at this point it is uh, I think eight ninety nine plus a dollar fifty shipping. I paid eight ninety nine in free shipping. You see, I did buy these things a while ago. But uh, also, I tried a little bit of a Googling around, and I could not find any kind of a data sheet for an RTL 8192EU. There's plenty of information for the CU, but I couldn't find anything on the EU uh, variant of this. So, yeah, you see those are almost the same thing that I have there, except for one's EU and one's CU. So I really don't understand uh, what the deal with this is. And you see the Intel NIC in there, the IX 217, but... Anyhow, I really don't understand why the heck these things don't work. Like I said, manually installing the driver that came on that little disk doesn't work. Uh, the drivers that Windows automatically found didn't work. So, yeah, I just have no idea why the thing won't work. So, uh, anyway, that's it for now, guys. Bye.